Our webinar will begin in five minutes.
Hola, Shit Familia, and welcome to today's Latinx Factor webinar, Dress to Impress. I'm Esther Gonzalez, and I will be your moderator. I work on the programs team here at SHIP, and I'm excited to be hosting this session today. I'm pleased to introduce today's speaker, Tiffany Ann Davis. Tiffany is a, st a style strategist, wardrobe renovator, photo shoot stylist, personal shopper, and fashion philanthropist. She is also the owner and founder of Tad of Style. Before I hand the mic over to Tiffany, I would I have a few housekeeping items to cover about this presentation and the Latinx Factor webinar platform. First, today's webinar will be available on demand after the live session and will be accessible through the SHIP website. If you have a question for our speaker, please feel free to send it through the question box on your webinar panel. We'll be answering questions at the end of the session if time permits. If we don't get to your question during today's webinar, we will be sure to follow up afterward via email. And lastly, we'd like to encourage you to share today's webinar with your social networks, including but not limited to Facebook and LinkedIn. So without any further ado, I'd like to kick things off by welcoming our speaker, Tiffany Ann Davis. Tiffany, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I am very, very grateful and excited to be hosting this webinar and the Latinx Factor for you guys. Um, I'm really hoping that this will be um, inspirational and, um, and useful, and I hopefully can share my knowledge with you guys um, as you all progress through your own careers and personal journeys and uh, how to incorporate style in a really classy way. Um, as you navigate through your life. And so I'm uh, very uh, honored that the organization has asked me to participate and to share what I can with you guys. Um, and I look forward to hearing all of your questions at the end and, um, and here to help as much as possible. So with that said, um, here's some photographs of just a little bit of background on myself. Um, as Esther mentioned, I'm a personal stylist or a wardrobe stylist. Um, I have been doing this with my own business for about six years now. And how I came about was really my whole life, I've always been dressing people. And even in kindergarten, my mom said I would have an extra backpack with me of an extra change of clothes to do a wardrobe change halfway through the day. So uh, I guess I've just always had it, had it in me um, that I just love helping people look and feel their best. And then I started renovating closets and doing that all and helping people organize their um, homes. And it just was a hobby. And then finally a girlfriend said to me about maybe 10 years ago, was like, why don't you do this for a living, you know, and, and get paid to do this. And, uh, and you know what? I said, why not? I uh, got my, after my, um, graduate degree, I got my MBA from the University of Central Florida, so go Knights, um, got that, and I spent about 12 years in education, but I really realized that this was a passion of mine, and so it's so important just to kind of, sometimes you take a leap of faith and, uh, and go for your dreams, so I applaud all of you for following your dreams um, and through the, the world of STEM, and, and this is my way of giving back, and you can see here I do uh, photo shoots and I help men and women do their headshots and so we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight about how to really have an outstanding um, resume style and uh, social media style and presence and, uh, and then on the right I uh, was honored to be asked to do a fashion show um, in Winter Park Florida in 2016 and so I had um, I presented and did a whole fashion show and directing and giving everyone tips on how to be up on the trade. So that was just a great experience that I went through. And um, so that's just a little bit about me. But yeah, so, uh, you know, now I'm six years in and I help men and women uh, with their own style and develop their own style. And uh, I'm happy to help you guys as much as I can. So tonight, Style Spotlight will be, we're going to touch on style versus fashion and what that looks like. Also, traveling in style, because I know that you all are going to be attending the October conference, or hopefully will be attending the October conference, um, the national uh, convention in Phoenix. So I want to get you prepped for that. 
And then also ColourPop, how to incorporate color into your work wardrobe. And then appropriate underneath. Um, so important to uh, not to neglect our undergarments. And also, as I mentioned, social media style, as well as our resume style. Then styling on a budget, because that is very important. And our eight must-haves for your work wardrobe. It's a list that I have put together that kind of give you some insider tips and tricks. And then some style myths. I know we all have our ideas on that, and this might help a little bit, kind of debunk all that. And then lastly, we'll recap with the cat of style takeaways. And then at the end, questions. So I'd like to go ahead and do a poll now uh, with your participation, just so I can get to know you a little bit better. Um, whether and ship, if you are the if you are a uh, junior, if you're in a high school level, or if you're undergraduate or recent grad, a professional, meaning you're in your early stages of experience, or a professional, which is three plus years of experience. We have 30 more seconds for the poll, so please be sure to cast your vote so that we can have an accurate depiction of our audience tonight. Last five seconds here and the poll is now closed. Okay, all right, so looks like we are all undergrad, mostly undergrad or early graduate, that's great, with 44%. All right, and your early professionals, looking at 19%, great. And for our pros, with three to five years, 38. Well, that's really great. This gives us a nice mix of um, some some graduate skills that we can have and style tips that that also will apply to our professionals. Um, the information really is great for everybody, um, all genders, nationalities, races, ages, you name it. It's all great information that you can carry on with you uh, through not only your professional career, but in your personal life. So uh, with that, to get to know you further, um, Esther, if we can switch it over to our next question. And I couldn't move it to the next screen, Esther, I think so, if, if you could help with that. But I would like to know uh, what agenda do you identify with? That way I can uh, start to tailor my presentation a little bit. Male or female, or if you prefer not to say, or non-binary third gender. We have 10 more seconds here. And the poll is now closed. Okay. Now it looks like tonight joining us, we have about, about half each and a little bit of non-binary and, and, um, and prefer not to say this is great, but thank you for participating. This gives me a good gauge on how I can help um, help navigate through the world of fashion from a male and female gives great insights and tips and where to shop. So thank you for that. Okay. Now Esther, I'm trying to go forward and if you could maybe help me and. Okay, one second here.
Okay, Tiffany, you should be able to have control of my screen now. So let's see if that works. Okay. Great. Okay, does everyone see what is style? Okay, it is a reflection of who you are. Um, I think style is a wonderful way for us to express ourselves as individuals. And uh, we can always keep it conservative and classy, as well as looking very elegant um, for work and for school. And um, so this is important. It expresses what your likes are, what your dislikes are, your interests, uh, your inspirations, if you have maybe your style icons and so forth. Audrey Hepburn is a great classic uh, American actress who's, you know, her style is known all over the world and you can create your own signature style as well. And also your aspirations and what you are really interested in um, and just giving you, expressing yourself to the world. And we want to always stay true to who you are and you want to have that confidence. Um, however, we just want to keep it very classy and, um, and appropriate for work when we are in those work settings. And to be honest, it goes along with, um, you know, in our day-to-day -day lives. You know, we never know who we're going to meet and who you're going to be working with. So it's always a great idea to put your best foot forward and never to look too sloppy in any sort of work arenas um, or just in your day-to-day -day life. Because when you feel better, you really do do better and then you will feel better as a result of that and that's what we hope to achieve so next esther if you could help okay great what is the difference you might ask between style and fashion and uh, i get this a lot because i think the words are used uh, interchangeably a lot but fashion is the way, and it's the way in which you represent your style to the world. So that would be things like the clothing themselves, the fabrics, different shoes that you wear, or your accessories, your bags, um, even your belts. Those are all fashions, and that's how, or the way in which you express yourself. So even, you know, colors can be a way of fashion. Um, it's all about it's all about using those as tools to express your style and your own individuality. Okay, next. I always like to tell, uh, I tell everybody that I work with, that you have to really imagine yourself um, whenever you are maybe in the morning, picking out what you're going to wear, or if you're trying new colors, interviewing for a job or an internship, or you're doing going to a job fair, or even the convention coming up in October, or buying new clothes. You really always want to ask yourself, and it's important, to add, the question is, what message am I sending? Okay, uh, this is very, very important. Um, a lot of times when you see somebody that's, you know, maybe a little wacky dressier, that kind of unfortunately gives the impression of who their personality is. And so we really want to always, again, put your best foot forward. And what message am I sending? I see this a lot of times with um, young women um, that are in the workforce or getting out there. And sometimes the clothing is a little too tight, you know? I mean, it might not be you know, too bad for the club, but, you know, we are trying to make a good first impression with our colleagues and our constituents, and this is so important. So always remember, what message am I sending? And is that how you want to accurately portray yourself? Okay, next, let's see, traveling in style. Now, you guys are have the honor, and I think it's gonna be out, and outstanding to go to the convention in October for those of you that can be traveling. Um, and I use the traveling in style as really a representation of how to act and dress when you're meeting people for the first time. And Raquel actually, um, she touched on this at the last conference that we had in Phoenix uh, last month. And the point to get across is that you never know who you're going to meet at the airport or at these conferences or conventions or when you have left your home base. You know, you're gonna be really, and you never know when those opportunities are to meet someone or to shine or to introduce yourself or maybe to exchange information. And this could really be a huge 
stepping stone in your career. Um, so we always want to represent our re represent ourselves the best. So here's some things for both men and women, and I put a picture here of what would be considered appropriate uh, for travel. And I think it also looks chic and classy um, and just well tailored. And that's the thing, please try to keep everything nice and well tailored and iron, an iron is so important or a steamer. Um, you know, those are cheap, affordable ways so everybody can have a nice pressed outfit and it really does, uh, you know, change the game for you. But really business casual attire or business formal attire is best. And when I say traveling, this could be at the airport, but for also when you're on the road in terms of going around the conference, our conventions and, um, and all of the events that you have while you are while you're on the road. A jacket and a blazer with some dress pants are great. Here in the pictures, both man and woman have on um, black jeans or black pants, and that too is, is fine, and they both have on some boots. Black boots are another way that you can look sleek and chic, um, and that they aren't as dressy as dress shoes. And But for men, loafers or boots are great, and women, flats or boots are work as well as, as well. And uh, I know how uncomfortable heels can be through those long days that you all have um, at these conventions. And so it's important to really be comfortable. And what I always suggest is that in your bag, you just, you know, have your shoes, your high heel shoes on hand. So ladies, you know, you don't have to wear those uncomfortable shoes all day. You can just store them and then whip them out for later for those important um, maybe meetings or events or dinners or something that you do have. But flip-flops are never okay when traveling. Um, I just think it's, it just shows that you're not really putting in a lot of effort. And even though they make really great, you know, flip-flops, let's keep that for more casual uh, opportunities and um, engagements and let's just have a more tailored, polished look for when you're on the road. And you never know who you're going to sit next to on the airplane. So, you know, I always, in my personal experience, I've always kept, you know, a business card or some sort uh, on me. I've had them made up before online, um, just very affordably, just so I had something to write down and exchange information with people. That's just a way that I've I used my networking um, in the past when I'm traveling. But lastly, don't forget your backpack or laptop bag. Uh, we always want to have that accessible in case we do want to uh, get some work done on the road. And then you just have it in your bag or backpack and, uh, and you're all set to go. So hopefully that helps going to your convention in October. Okay, and then next, color pop. Color, as I mentioned, is a way that we can express ourselves and express our own personal style. So how do we incorporate this into your work wardrobe for both men and women? Well, I love a good colored pantsuit. A beautiful pantsuit for both men and women can be a great navy. It can be even as, um, you know, as bold as a red suit. Um, as long as you dress it very classy, you can get away with it. And it is a statement piece. Um, but there's affordable, very affordable um, suits at Zara. They recently came out for fall. So I always tend to check back periodically on these different websites. So please take notes of uh, some of these sites that I found you that are very affordable um, for, for you as early professionals. And then footwear here, this is an example of how you can uh, incorporate a pop of color. Here is a mustard shoe for men. It's a loafer. And uh, it's got the, the tassels resembling a dress shoe, but it's in a nice suede and a nice suede mustard. Mustard uh, is a good color for this fall and style. And then the woman in the picture is wearing red boots. And, and those are also a nice uh, way to incorporate color. So you can keep everything um, very streamlined and, and elegant in your clothes and then just do a pop of color in your footwear, which, is, which can be fun. Um, way to, you know, to switch up your look from time to time. And then next for ColourPop, 
is how do we incorporate this into your work wardrobe? And I always say your accessories. And accessories, I, I, you know, kind of say that they're just your accent pieces. They're accentuating, um, they're accentuating the look, overall look. So men, here's some pictures of bow ties. Bow ties are becoming very, very popular and, and will be in style for this fall. Um, so bow ties in different colors uh, really can make a statement. And you don't have to match your bow tie to your shirt and all of that. Um, that's a little passe. So you just want to make sure everything is in the same color family. So if you're doing like a light blue tie, uh, like a light blue bow tie, do that maybe with a navy shirt or a navy suit to keep it in the same color family. Uh, men, you have some wonderful different options if you could shop at Ross. Um, and uh, your Ross stores are all over the country. Ross and Marshalls are wonderful for these accessories. They're very affordable, a lot of times on clearance. So you can change these out and you can keep your, say your work suit or a work dress or your attire, you know, put your money into those items and then you can use smaller amounts of money and just here and there to kind of switch up the looks, uh, making them fresh and new by adding different, say, women, you could add different types. So you could do, you know, pretty, becoming many different pretty patterns now um, that will be able to express your style. I love this maroon pair here. Um, I think that's such a nice color with a, with a black suit or with a brown suit, having the maroon tights underneath. And again, the mustard colored and yellow is a wonderful way to uh, make the look feel fall and give yourself color and express your personality as well. So do this through camisoles, your headbands, purses, and uh, Marshalls is another great uh, chain in the country for affordable shopping. Okay, next, appropriate underneath. Um, I know a lot of the trend right now, and I want to address this because the trend right now is to wear dark undergarments with white shirts and things and this is really not appropriate for the workplace and for school and we want to make sure that we don't see those undergarments so gentlemen if you can you know wearing a uh, underneath a, a sport shirt underneath um, very affordable at target um, you can get these in bulk a lot of times you know even hanes fruit of the loom just your regular tank top um, but also for excessive sweating, I like the t-shirt option. I'm in Florida right now, <laughs> and so it is quite hot. So definitely a, an undershirt would be helpful. Um, but a nice v-neck always looks nice, um, and you can wear, we can wear them. And, uh, and also a great thing, here's a little tad tip. Uh, pit stains can actually be removed out of your shirt with uh, lemon juice. So just something that I just thought of, and um, hopefully that helps. But yeah, a little lemon juice and water, and it'll help to remove pit stains out of your shirt. And then for women, stick with nude or white or undergarments instead of black. Uh, we don't want to see under a white shirt uh, your bra strap sticking out and have it be dark undergarments. It just doesn't look that classy. So we really want it in professional settings um, where wear black undergarments with black clothing or stick to white and nude for under your white clothing. Okay. Next we have social media style. This is, as we know, employers, your employers or your future employers really do check out social media and your activity on there. So yes, we might feel like we want to post all of our pictures and our, you know, bathing suits and Cancun spring break, but maybe that's not a good idea. So we really want to be conscious of what we put on the internet because it is part of your personal branding and your transformation and action, your, your professional portfolio, and we want to always give a positive image. So here, this is what maybe a headshot would be like. Uh, this is my headshot on my Facebook page, and you get to express my personality, um, dress pretty formally, and, and you always want to have a smile on your face. It's very inviting and warm and shows people that you're open, and uh, so don't forget to smile. But you want to remember, what message am I sending? It's very important on social media. 
And then next, we have your resume style. I actually cut and paste a picture of my resume here, and I put my headshot on here because after a job fair, when maybe you've had a great connection with someone, or you're at the conference or the convention and you're meeting someone, um, when you're handing that resume, they can go, ah, yes, I remember that face, or I remember his or her face. So I always suggest to include a recent headshot. And ask a friend, you know, to help take your picture for you. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be done uh, professionally, but no selfies. <laughs> and uh, make sure to highlight all of your achievements. Be proud of what you've, um, how, what you've done and where you are today. Um, insert pics and images of your own portfolio that you have. The more to express yourself, the better. But ask a friend or a colleague to help revise and be, again, confident and proud of all that you've done so far. And don't forget to smile. Okay, styling on a budget. Um, I have given you a few websites as we've gone through and I'll continue to give you some more great websites to shop at if, um, if they are not in physical locations for you to go in store and shop. But I don't know how many of you guys have heard of Poshmark.com, but Poshmark is a great site to buy and sell gently used clothing. And so uh, I used to, do this a lot um, after you're done wearing something maybe once and or maybe we all have things that are hanging in our closet that still have tags on it you can turn that into money for yourself to then go and buy new pieces in your wardrobe um, so instead of donations uh, this is just a, another way that people have been using um, the opportunity to buy and sell your your gently worn clothing and that can be done at poshmark.com so take note of that. And then host a clothes swap. So these are actually pictures from a clothes swap that I did uh, personally um, for Tad of Style in Orlando, Florida. And I would put up racks and racks for uh, gentlemen and ladies to come. And what you do, if you haven't heard of it before, it's a great way of swapping clothing. So there's no money used, everything is bartering. And it's a great way to get new clothes because it is free. So who doesn't like free, right? Um, so yes, you can exchange clothing. So this is open. And, and I just uh, even put a Facebook invite for, for people and invited them. Um, and, and you have just, you can put up clothes with hangers and everybody can try on clothes and look around and you just all swap clothing, accessories, even shoes. So think of this as a great way to get your local colleagues involved or people in your area or maybe even um, in your dorm or, um, or you know, in your neighborhood. Everybody loves to do this. So great for men and women. Okay. Next, we're going to go over what I consider are my must-haves uh, for your work wardrobe. And I've geared this to fall and winter to make it very current. And these are all wonderful, uh, you know, little tips for both men and women. So please take notes. Number one, I definitely think a black pantsuit, you cannot go wrong. Black is flattering and slimming on every shape and style and, and size. And is the go-to look for day to night. Uh, the reason I choose black, as you can see by the woman wearing it on the right, she looks very classy and it's nice and tailored. The, the um, pant legs are not too long at the end. You want to make sure that you're hemmed, uh, all of your hemming is appropriate. Alterations really are the key, um, you know, so you don't have to spend a lot of money uh, on your suits. But just I always suggest you buy a size up that they're not too tight because again too tight is not flattering um, and that will stick out like a sore thumb so we really want alterations of a suit to be great if you can see with the picture of the gentleman here in the gray suit his jacket's a little too tight on his arm um, you can see it's pulling over the shoulder and it just doesn't look that good when things are tight and his pants look a little tight and even though that is the trend right now um, when it is in that gray material, you can even see the bulges and bumps a little bit more. And so we want to stay away from 
uh, the a gray uh, a lot of times, unless it's really tailored to perfection. So I always say that black is the way to go, but you can mix and match all the different work suit, um, you know, options, even a skirt and so forth into that. And H&M has wonderful ways of doing that for both guys and girls. So please look at hm.com. And for women, uh, you can dress this down with flats for the daytime and dress it up with heels for night. So again, in your bag, carry you know your fancier shoes and then just pop them out when you need to so that you're not killing your feet all day. But for guys, wear a dressier sneaker for uh, more casual occasions. So that's where in the airport again, you could do a dressier sneaker here like shown on this gentleman uh, that has a little bit of suede in it that kind of jazzes it up a bit and that would be great for um, for a work and place environment. Okay, next, moving along to the stylish blazer. I love the stylish blazer. Double-breasted uh, jackets are very, very in fashion right now, um, but it goes well over any blouse or a graphic tee, a dress even, and pantsuit. So as I mentioned, the pop of color or colored, uh, you know, colored suit are very on trend right now. So here's my girl, Selena. Uh, Selena Gomez has a red suit on, which I think is really, really fun and yet still elegant. And then at night, um, after, uh, after the evening's done, or maybe you've been at the convention all day, keep the blazer on with a pair of jeans in the evening, and you're very on trend for more of casual settings. So yes, uh, shop all of these of workplace separates, again, at H&M.com. Next is the graphic top or tee. Um, I think these really are a way to express your individuality and your personality, and you can have fun with a lot of kitschy sayings, um, and it's a nice talking point and something that, you know, if you see something, you can always compliment. Oh, I like your shirt. Or you might have something in common. Maybe it's your favorite rock band or something. And, um, and so those are just nice talking pieces because we want to make, again, conversation with people that you're going to be meeting out into the field. And when you're um, with SHIP and your journeys here, um, you know, so any little talking piece is, is a good idea. So, but for a casual work look, this is a great um, way to express yourself. But I say, please keep it under a blazer, a blazer or oversized cardigan. Because you don't want the whole shirt sticking out. That makes it too much of a statement. By just hiding it a little bit and having it underneath your jacket makes it more conservative. So you can have a fun image or an inspirational saying um, and have a point of interest, but just make sure that it's done tastefully. But you can find these at your local thrift mart or shoptarget.com. They've got them for like $14, I think, $14.99. And Target keeps on changing them out all the time. Um, so you really don't have to break the bank with that. And next, is the knit cardigan or sweater. Chunky sweater, sweaters are wonderful for this fall. Great for when you're chilly at work. You can see the gentleman has put it over a plaid shirt. That really looks nice and tasteful. And the, and the lady here has it in a nice camel colored with the sleeves rolled up. And um, I always say to please make sure again you get a size larger for this so that we, you're clothes aren't bunching underneath and it doesn't look like it's too tight again. So we really don't want to have tight clothes for your professional wardrobe. Okay, next, number five, is our button-down shirt. A nice button-down shirt or blouse is just a must-have. It really is. Any age, um, man or female, it does not matter. It's very chic and that you can dress for after work with some, you could do leather, leather pants, um, jeans, shorts, everything, lots of different ways, as you can see how uh, the girls in the picture here have been styled. But again, please buy a size up. I don't know if you've ever seen, you know, shirts, the gaps in between in the, where the buttons are in the chest and there's that gap. That means if you see that in the dressing room, it is too tight. So please go a size up and then have a seamstress 
uh, take in, uh, in on the sides to fit properly. Next is the fun flat. You can play here with colors and different prints and patterns and embellishments. And all of these things express your personality so you can keep your work wardrobe kind of conservative and elegant and then have some fun with the shoe. But flats are great for comfort, for traveling, for those long days on your feet. But different textures and fabrics are ways to really make it look expensive where you don't have to break the bank. And um, just again, have your flats um, to be in your, you know, the main part of the work look and then bring your dress heels along in case you want to dress up for dinner or for the actual interview or something. And then next is the crossbody bag or purse. I think these are wonderful. You, they can cross them over your body, but for men and women, a nice mail bag looks great. And they're called mail because this is how mailmen would carry along um, their documents um, here in a mail bag, but they're stylish and they're safe. So those long nights, whether you're on campus or at meetings, um, you can know that everything, and including your laptop or your iPad can be in there, but it can act as a pop of color and a point of interest. And you can shop different affordable styles at Macy's.com. Um, actually, Macy's has much more online than they do in the store. So I always suggest to my clients, you know, to check out online. And then um, to a long strap, I always suggest a long strap because it elongates the body, which gives a slimming effect. And so, uh, and if you put the bag on like the back of your hip, it really does just elongate the body. So make sure that you get one with an adjustable strap. And lastly, number eight, shapewear. And I say the best for last because um, as we were touching on before, undergarments really are important. Um, you don't wanna see any different patterns or prints coming out of your undergarments, um, you know, out of the shirt but concealing your lumps and bumps are always gonna make you feel better to give you that confidence. And my favorite is a boy short for, that works for both men and women and it's at target.com for only like $18.99. So it's a great affordable way to feel confident under your clothes. And then my, uh, my style myth, before we get into that, my tab tips are, that again, we just wanna make sure to remember what message are you sending is so important when you're picking out that outfit, when you're even picking out jewelry and you've got those big earrings on, you know, we all love a good big, big hoop, right? But those aren't exactly tasteful for work. So we wanna just, when you're, you know, when you're looking at what to wear, you're shopping online, what message am I sending is very important. And then onto our style myth, true or false. This is just a fun game that I like to uh, play sometimes. Hopefully uh, you will maybe get some of these right. Let's see. Number one, we've got you are not supposed to mix patterns, florals, and stripes. Uh, what do we think? That is false. You absolutely can mix florals and stripes or patterns and stripes or patterns and prints. We just, again, want to make sure that they're complementary colors in the same color family and complementary. So always ask a friend. And we want to be able to compliment each other or help give each other, you know, criticism, constructive criticism always. So get a second opinion if you need help with this. Okay, next. Every outfit needs a point of interest. Here the uh, gentleman's outfit is a kind of a coral pink tie, and the woman has a beautiful statement necklace underneath. What do we think? True or false? Okay, true. Yes, you want to have something that is going to stand out and just not take away from the look, but enhance the overall look. So a point of interest piece definitely is needed. Moving along to the next one, your bag, backpack, or your purse and shoe color must match. That was one I think probably my grandma uh, told me about. But no, you do not have to match. That is false. You do not have to match. Just keep it in the same color family. Okay, you can't wear white after Labor Day. What do we think? True or false? False. You absolutely can wear white after Labor Day. 
So don't um, take that out of an option here. You've got a woman wearing all white and then the gentleman has with a pop of color tie. I think it looks really classy, but my tad tip on this one is to bring a tied pen with you. You know, those are at on the store or Amazon for like $5. Bring a tied pen with you in your backpack if you don't already, because uh, you could get stained. <laughs> Moving along, horizontal stripes can make you appear wider. Ooh, this is tricky. True, they absolutely can make you appear wider. However, the picture of the woman here on the right, I chose this picture because she's incorporated vertical stripes into her dress as well as horizontal, so that it's not just horizontal stripes everywhere. Um, so if you're gonna do a thicker horizontal stripe, maybe doing another pattern um, or not having an entire outfit of the stripe would be best. And here again, her shoes aren't matching the bag, but they complement each other. Still very classy and a great dress that's not too tight and fitting for the, for the office or for any conference you might having up, have coming up. And then here for the gentleman, you know, smaller lines, smaller striped uh, look is the way to go. And by breaking it up with a blue tie does break up the stripe. That's a way to help you appear more narrow. Okay, my tab takeaways for this evening before we get to questions is to remember to reflect what message am I sending? That's so important. So no matter if it is on your resume, you know, you've got or if you're at the conference and you convention, you've got a couple minutes to make an impact on your personality. So just what message are you, are you sending? And that's important, but it's always the best way is to be yourself and have that confidence in yourself and keep it classy. Next, it's always better to dress up than to dress down. If you feel that you might be too casual, you probably are. So, you know, make a conscious effort to say or to take a picture of yourself and send it to a, a friend like, hey, what do you think about this out outfit? You know, um, people really will help and, and it's always good to get a second opinion. But dress up if you, there's never, a, there's no such thing as being too dressy, okay? You can never be too dressy, even on the airplane. And then uh, lastly, the best accessory truly is a smile. So keep your chin up and a smile going, and I know you guys are going to do great. So with that said, if you'd be like to follow me, um, I do a lot of, um, I'm, I have a blog that I'm working on setting up right now, but there's Instagram and Twitter, LinkedIn I'm also on, and you can look for my handle, it's Tad of Style, and the T-A-D, Tad of Style is my initial, Tiffany Ann Davis. So. Uh, please follow me on Instagram or Facebook, Twitter, and uh, you can kind of see and follow me around as I uh, help men and women enhance their style. So thank you all leaders. I appreciate having me and uh, helping me to empower yourself. I'd like to open it up for questions um, and I hopefully will get to all of them, uh, but I'm happy to help. Thank you so much, Tiffany. That was definitely a whirlwind of information. And I'm already looking at my closet trying to figure out what's going to stay and what's going to go. Um, so as we <laughs> prepare for the National Convention, uh, we our first question is actually about the National Convention and the fact that it's in Arizona. So it might be a bit warm during the convention, although not as warm as summer. How can we prepare for the heat in Arizona? Absolutely. This is where layering is going to be so very important. And I actually live in Florida half the year. That's where I expanded my business out to. So it is very hot there right now. And we really want to have layering um, as a way to, to be not only trendy, but you can also um, be comfortable. So for example, I would suggest maybe wearing like gentlemen, you can wear a short sleeve shirt um, or great, like a short sleeve dress shirt with a tie. That will keep your arms cooler. Uh, we wanna stay away from shorts for gentlemen always. Um, so I know that's gonna be tough, but um, also the shapewear 
uh, that I mentioned will actually great way to kind of soak up the sweat, if you will, um, under clothing in Arizona. It really does help. So if you have a perspiration issue, you're not alone. Um, staying away from dark colors is always best in those uh, temperate heat. Um, so if you, you know, maybe looking for that white pantsuit really would be a great option if you can find an affordable one. And I'm sure you could find an affordable, maybe try Amazon and just looking and like type in, you know, work, uh, work clothes or suit separate in white. And I bet you there's a lot of different options and that would be a, a nice and, you know, cooler coloring, a uh, cool color for you. But, um, but yes, layering is important. Don't wear the jacket, just, you know, have the jacket around your arm and then put it on once you get into the different rooms uh, at, at the convention. Thank you, definitely good advice um, for the national convention. Our next question asks, how, um, how about mixing vertical and horizontal patterns? Is that acceptable? Okay, yes, you absolutely can mix vertical and horizontal patterns. I know um, you, when everybody thinks horizontal, you think it would make you appear wider. So you want to do, you want to add in vertical stripes when you can. Um, I always say, though, when you are, you know, doing something like a pattern, whether it's a stripe uh, or even a polka dot, if you are, uh, don't have the entire outfit stripes. You know, I think that's a little overpowering. So maybe just do like the shirt and stripes and then solid colored dress pants or a solid skirt. Um, and, you know, so you just want to keep, you want to have a point of interest for each outfit, but just have it to be one piece. So if you have, you know, striped pants, then do a solid color shirt on top. And that will help to balance things out more. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, as an engineering student looking for a job, STEM employers may not be as impressed or even turned away by a different or stand out, quote unquote, outfit. How can I balance standing out with what employers may be expecting? Oh, this is such a good question. Yes, you're absolutely right. It is a fine line between, you know, expressing your own personal style and not acting a little too out there uh, with your fashion. Um, you know, it's important to always stay on the more conservative side. Uh, we really want you to look professional at all times. And I would suggest using your accessories for both men and women as a way to play around with expressing your personality. So, you know, maybe if you're gonna do say a black suit or a navy suit, Maybe do like a pop of color, a coral tie. Uh, the color of the year this year is living coral, which is a really great color for both men and women. Um, so maybe just having like the pop of color tie uh, would express your, your personality and that employer go, oh, you know what a great tie or great bow tie or a handkerchief, you know, in your handkerchief in, the, in, your, in your pocket square of your suit. Um, those are a great way. Or cufflinks for a gentleman. You know, they've got very affordable uh, cufflinks now. I love Amazon. I really shop everything, um, you know, for workplace essentials on Amazon. So try there for some, you know, uh, ways to express yourself. But your bag can express yourself. Or again, your, sh your shoes. Um, and that way it doesn't have to be so loud in your clothing. Um, uh, you don't have to get too crazy with your clothing. You can just accessorize appropriately to kind of express yourself the best. Thank you, Tiffany. Uh, the next question is, if I'm at the conf uh, convention and there's no one-to-one -one interaction, like outside of an interview, is it okay for me to not wear a tie? Oh, that's a tough one. Let's see, to wear a tie or not wear a tie. You know, I always say it's better to be dressed up than dressed down. Yes, we you are going to be in Phoenix and it's going to be hot. But, you know, maybe keeping the tie off for when you're 
traveling through the airport if you need to, if you know, if it makes you uncomfortable, or after you know the day is done. Even though you might not have an interview on the on the books yourself, again, you don't know who you're going to be meeting just in the hallway, in the bathroom, for you know, you never know, or or in the Uber that you're sharing, or at the airport. So even if you don't have um, an interview, that's okay. It's an opportunity for you to be networking and meeting people. And so a tie really is a great talking piece and like, oh, that's a great, you know, that's a great color or great pattern. Um, gentlemen really look at those things and so do um, women. And so I always say, when in doubt, dress it up. Taking notes. Thank you. Um, and the next question is, um, are nice sneakers for females um, appropriate? Well, I love the new trend, which is having sneakers and dress sneakers with suits. Uh, it really is a classy way of doing it. If you are going to wear sneakers um, instead of, say, ballet flats for women, um, please make sure that you have your Tide pen with you and clean up any scuff marks. Um, we don't want dirty sneakers. I really don't feel that even dressy sneakers are appropriate for, um, for say, an interview. But if those, you have those long days at the convention and you have a dressier pair of sneakers, something that's clean, um, you know, something that's clean and looks new, those would be acceptable. But again, I always have to say, when in doubt, you know, dress it up and uh, go for the dress shoe just to be safe. Um, you know, sometimes it's sacrificing comfort, but it's really making a great first impression. Wonderful. I am a fan of the new style as well. Um, yeah, there is a to. question, a logistical question, and I'll go ahead and answer it. And the question is around availability of this presentation. Yes, this webinar is being recorded and it will be posted on programs dot ship dot org in the latin x factor um sub page so if you have any questions about the recording you can always also email us at programs at ship dot org the next question that we have is also regarding um, national convention and the question is, are not very formal colors for men okay, like light pink or any other different than typical white, blue, and beige? Okay, sure, for a gentleman. Sure, absolutely. Uh, pastel colors um, will definitely work. A light blue uh, color is flattering on most skin tones. It really is a great color for guys. Um, and so is pink. Yes, gentlemen can wear pink, no problem. Um, every, I know all colors are good. It's just how you wear them. You know, be confident. And if you like your shirt and you like that color, yes, it's appropriate for work. Just make sure that you maybe have the navy blazer over it, or you have uh, the, you know, or the khaki khaki pants with it on bottom. Um, you know, try to have one of the more neutral safe quote safe colors if you will and then have your pastel colors your pinks your light blues um your mustards anything that are your kind of off the cuff colors to be as more of the accent so leave that into your bow tie your long tie your dress shirt uh that type of thing i just wouldn't go like a, a baby blue whole pantsuit you know that i think says uh spring too much so i would stick stay away from like a full baby blue suit or a baby pink you know pastel pink suit uh, leave that for spring okay all right sounds good so the last question that we have is kind of an interesting one and it asks would it be a good idea to wear the company colors for an interview for example yellow a, a yellow tie for a shell interview you know actually i think that's a great idea um as long as the outfit and the dress is appropriate for an interview so if you can say wear that color 
uh, that represents the company. If you want to say where that's in the in your tie, just please make sure it's a tie. Or if, or maybe if it's at a university, you know, you just don't want to have a T-shirt with you know the logo on it. Um, make sure it's just the colors that are represented. But that is a good talking point. Um, that way you can say in the interview, like, oh, I wanted to represent, you know, the company today uh, through my tie, through, you know, expressing, um, you know, my, my company spirit, even though you're not part of the company yet, it shows that you're very eager and you put a lot of thought and effort into what you were wearing to make a good first impression. So I think that's a very creative way to do so um, as long as it's too, not too loud uh you know or too much um, again stand aside of being a, a more conservative but no that's a great idea thank you so much for your insight tiffany it's been a real pleasure um co-hosting this uh webinar with you i'm excited for all of the fabulous um outfits that we're going to see at the national convention and i know um, in addition to all the questions that we had in the question box we also had many thanks for the insider tips um, and all the information that you shared so thank you so much um, thank you to all of our attendees for watching this webinar please be sure to share this with your friends and family who may be attending the ship national convention as well and stay tuned for next week uh, when we'll have our next Latinx webinar. Thank you. Take care.